Hello. I wanted to take a little break from university work, but also from scripted videos. I am working on a video. It's about the concept of violence and how certain games handle such violence, specifically Watch Dogs 2, and in relation to other games, for example, Hotline Miami or Spec Ops The Line. Those are some of the examples I'm gonna be talking about. But um, other than that, here I am with a non-scripted kind of video, I guess something more casual and a bit more personal. And well, with the introduction out of the way, uh, as you may have read for the title of the video, I wanted to talk about games that inspire me personally to work on the gaming industry. Now, I know the gaming industry is a very rough world. It is fun, it is enjoyable, but I think it is also a very rough work environment. It's very competitive, but I guess I wanna work there regardless. Now, what inspired this particular video was the release of The Last of Us 2. Now, I know it's a very controversial game and a lot of people have very strong opinions regarding the game. I honestly don't care about any of those. I just think it's a beautiful game. Uh, it has its problems, but I'm not here to talk about that. The way the game inspired this video is that just seeing how someone crafted that, a team crafted that, I think it's just it's just beautiful, it's just gorgeous, it's just brilliant and I, I guess The Last of Us is kind of those recent games that reminded me how much I want to work in this industry because the last game that reminded me that I wanted to work in the gaming industry was The Outer Worlds. I, that was by watching a documentary by the channel Noclip, those, they are very famous for their documentaries and um, they were talking about how to writing and creating characters, uh, a very specific portion of the game. And it was it was very, very inspiring to me as a creative person in general. And those two games kind of made me think which games inspire me to want to work here in the first place. So the first game that kind of inspired me to want to work in the video game industry in the first place was Life is Strange and the prequel Life is Strange Before the Storm. Now, while I do believe the first game deserves a separate video, not the prequel, but the, the first game at least deserves a separate video on my channel. I'm not going to talk in depth about the game, just barely. I'm just going to barely scratch the surface, but there are a few, quite a few points that kind of inspire me to want to work in the industry. One of them is that at the time I played Life is Strange, it was one of those games that it was quite unique. I have never played anything like that before. That was kind of my first, one of my first introductions to more... I guess mundane and more more grounded games. I know Max has powers, of course, but regardless of that, it's just about human interaction in general. And, and it's finding a mystery, sure, but it's about human mystery, you know, and about human relationships. And I guess that was my first introduction to those type of games, more uh, cinematic and more, I guess, adventure and character focused. Actually, the first time I finished the game, I, I did cry at the end. But upon multiple replays in the future, I kind of learned the, the problems that the game has, that it's not a perfect game. No game is perfect, let me tell you that. No game is perfect. But um, I, I kind of realized that the problems that the game has when it comes to narrative and when it comes to characters and plot holes and stuff like that. There are not many. There, there are a few, but not many. But that game also kind of taught me to to analyze games more 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 deeply if that makes any sense uh, back in the day i didn't wrote any any of this stuff but um it kind of kind of taught me that you have to to analyze games sometimes you know have to think a bit more because after multiple replays and and kind of appreciating the game as it is and well because it's one of my favorite video games of all time it's on my top 10 list basically if i were to make a list um after finishing it for multiple times, I just said to myself, wow, I, I have to, I want to make something similar. I want to make something like this. And I have quite a few bullet points written down. And the first of them is the character of Max, the protagonist. I think the, the protagonist, uh, Max Schofield, is a very grounded and very relatable character. Uh, it was for me at the time. I was in high school when I played uh, Life is Strange and I've struggled with... Uh, quite a few things and so the game kind of resonated with me but um i think the character of max to me was like a first time thing like i've never seen such a grounded character such a normal character if that makes any sense when, when it comes to a game i was used to uh the stereotypical video game character but that was the first time i was introduced to an actual just person who has well it she has powers obviously but it's just it's just a person, you know, she's still a teenager just dealing with life. It just happens that uh, she got powers by taking a Polaroid, but uh, other than that, she's just a teenager. And you can see, 
you can see that throughout the game uh, how she's not like a very responsible person or she hasn't been the, the best person ever so that kind of resonated with me as well and you know because she's just quirky and she's just awkward and kind of anxious and she has quite a few regrets so that that resonated with me a lot also the people in Arcadia Bay and also the town of Arcadia Bay itself while I am not American it relates just a tiny bit to my hometown it has similar problems and similar situations and that was the second point actually the setting to me was it was very unique because I have never seen a setting like that one before if that makes any sense it's just an, a normal town in Oregon it's just a very small town and it's just about people in high school and very uh, various situations but also some of the other small settings were interesting as well the diner and um, the junkyard stuff like that was just very mundane and you uh, at the time I thought how is a junkyard interesting in a video game how is a school interesting in a video game I can see that in a drama in a television series but not in a video game and at the time it was just like wow how can you make this interesting so the setting was very very new and very fresh to me at the time the other point is um the dialogue i think the dialogue is is quite interesting i'm not gonna say good and i'm not gonna say bad it's just there it's just like a coming out of age game with a very appropriate dialogue i know there's there's quite a few cringy dialogues and that can be tied to the creators being uh, uh french straight guys instead of you know young americans probably i mean it's just writing teenagers is hard i'm just gonna tell you that writing teenagers is hard it's like hard to do it without sounding cringy and hard to do it without uh, sound sounding like you're trying too hard to be young if that makes any sense especially if you're if you're older or if you're trying to to write characters that that don't have any similarities to you if that makes any sense but I thought the dialogue was interesting the first time I played it because, like I said, it just ties to the concept of, of the game being quite mundane at times. Because, for example, when, when Max and Chloe are just having conversations, for example, in Chloe's uh, house or at school or, for example, in the pool or um, in the diner, they're just talking about some random stuff, you know, or looking through Max's... Uh, text messages and journal entries uh, she's just talking about normal stuff and at the time it was interesting because I was like how uh, you remember how I said that how can you make a junkyard interesting in a video game I was like how can you make mundane teenager talk interesting in a video game how can you make a video game about that I mean I was I was just so focused on the power and I kind of ignore the whole uh, drama situation now if I play the game now I'm focused on the drama, I guess, on, on Max and Chloe and the characters around them more than the powers. I actually don't care much about the powers in the game. I know it drives the story and I think it's important. I just don't care much about the powers and I care a bit more about the story and the characters. The other point is the overall cinematic experience, if that makes sense. Like just watching some of the cutscenes, some of the some of the scenery, how everything is put together and this kind of weird filter and this very warm color palette is just very easy on the eye and it's very fun and it's very cute to look at just looking at it for example max can sit in various places around the game and you can just experience this very cinematic moment where she's just thinking or talking to herself stuff like that for example when he, when she plays guitar in her um in her dormitory uh, those those moments were like unique to me because I was like I've never seen this in a video game never ever before and you may point out quite a few examples of games that did this before life is strange I'm just saying that was my first introduction to things like that and the last point is just a bit more personal but how the game resonated with me like I said at, at the time I had uh, more things in common with Max for example you know how she kind of let Chloe down when she shouldn't have I kind of let people down at the time at the time I played the game that I, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have abandoned some people. And I kind of did that. And when Chloe was pissed at Max, I was like, that that's probably what would happen if I were to talk about, to talk to those people again, you know? Stuff like that. I, quite a few things that resonated with me. Like I said, Arcadia Bay, it's a bit similar to my hometown, even if it's not an American uh, town. It was one of the first games also that kind of did the um, LGBT representation, I guess, right or, or good. One of the first games that I, I 
I play that had good representation. I talk about it in my video actually, but um, just seeing the relationship between Chloe and, and Max was was quite organic. I was like, I felt like I was watching just a series or a movie, you know, not a not a game because I've I've never experienced such a thing in a video game. And like I said, it resonated with me at the time I was with my second, I think my second boyfriend, and I was very happy with him, and he liked the game as well. So we kind of talked about it. Now this game is quite more recent and it's What Remains of Edith Finch. What Remains of Edith Finch is I think a masterpiece when it comes to storytelling. The people who did this game are very very good. The first time I played it I was kind of interested in the mystery but once you start discovering what's going on in the Finch house you can't stop. I couldn't put the game down. I was just so focused. They had my, my full attention. I think I was gonna eat that particular day. And then I didn't because I was just so focused on the game. It's just so beautiful to look at. It's just a wonderful experience. You you combine the visuals, the animation, the art and the music. And you have this very beautiful cinematic experience that I talked about in my last particular point. And if you've seen the game, you know that some of the letters in the screen kind of disappear with your, mom with your movements, with the animation. It's just tied to the animation a lot. And I think it works well. It's the first time I've seen something like that in a video game. But I think that what remains of it at Finch is just a masterpiece when it comes to storytelling. And it's a very, very beautiful game. It's I, I will give it a 9.9 out of 10 if, if I were to give it a score. But the points that kind of um, made me like the game and, and why the game inspired me to work in the industry is... Well, like I said, brilliant storytelling. I think what Remains of Edith Finch is, is just great when it comes to storytelling. The way they portray the Finch family, the main character, how you kind of find out things about them and how some of the things, some of the details you 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 can find around the house are, are not um, in your face. You have to find them yourself. You have to find them if you want to know more about the particular character, that particular family member. And at the end, while the story is laid out to you, ultimately it comes to, to your perception of how, the, how you look at things and if you find X or Y object or, or thing in the game, X or Y detail. So I think the, the brilliant storytelling is just, wow, it's just S+. Plus. The other point is create personal stories. What I mean with this is just how personal what remains of Edith Finch truly is it's about someone going back to their to their family house after their family all of their family is gone and it's just super super personal because you find out everything about it i mean i mean everything every single little tiny detail from the moment they were born to the moment they die to the protagonist it's just the story itself is so so personal in a weird way that it's just brilliant. The other point is the world building. What I mean with this is just how as soon as you step into the world of what remains of Edith Finch, as soon as you start the game, you know it's gonna be a unique experience. I mean, uh, the, the game starts with a character opening a notebook and, and well, the title starts as well. And you can notice quite a lot of details. The character has a cast on their arm and and once you step in the forest the first forest area is just beautiful it's just gorgeous to look at and once you go into the finch house it's just it's just so gorgeous it's so brilliant and so wonderful the the world building is fantastic you can see everything books decorations and just the structure of the house it's like this huge monstrosity and the the upper part of the house the third and the fourth floor is just this kind of tumor growing out of the house and the world building itself it's wonderful and, and i i think who came up with this who wrote this who who designed this it's it's awesome and the last point is it's unique there's nothing else like what remains of Edith Finch to me there are quite a few titles that are similar but nothing compared to that and I said to myself if I were to make a game one of the key points is that it has to be unique it has to be something different you have to bring something different to the table what's the point to me of releasing another shooter like Call of Duty like this or that game for example most recently Valorant Valorant is kind of a mix of uh, Rainbow Six Siege, Counter-Strike and Overwatch and while I think it's a fun game I think it's very it's very ugly when it comes to the art but it's just a mix match of absolutely everything I mentioned before 
and it's like why do that in the first place it worked for them good for them but why do that do that in the first place and to me i'm thinking if i were to make a game i want to make something at least i want to bring something new you know i want to bring something new to look at something new to to play something new to interact with and what main to it finch kind of taught me how there are no limits to your imagination and there are no limits to how much you can do with a game with the art with the animations with the with the script with the characters there are no limits to our creativity and if there are no limits well let's do something unique well this last game is one that you're probably so sick of hearing me talk about it you ready it's not in the woods so you're telling me that you're not just a shitty YouTuber, YouTuber. you're also a fucking idiot. I've talked about Night in the Woods numerous times in my channel. It has a separate video, it's mentioned in uh, quite a few videos, and that's the game I talked about in my interview that I did with my friend Sacre Tetris. And well, like I said, I've talked about this game many, many times, and you know why I like it. I like the characters, I like specific characters, about how it's so relatable, the music, the art in general. And how the portrayal of LGBT characters, the portrayal of mental health, how kind of inclusive and good it is. You know, I've talked about it quite a few times. You know why I like it, but the game inspired me to work on the gaming industry because how human and relatable the characters can be despite being just uh, animals. I've talked about this quite a few times in many videos, but you already know this. I love how how the human and relatable some of the characters can be. I mean how relatable is Beatrix to me as a person even though she's like a bluish crocodile you know I mean how can you make a game that's why why I ask what I ask myself uh, when I finish Night in the Woods how can you make a game so relatable and so human and so mundane and so that it stays in your head for quite a few days, it's just wonderful. Then I ask myself the, the same thing I ask when I finish What Remains of Edith Finch. Who wrote this? Who makes this? Who who makes this kind of thing? You know, and it kind of inspired me to to work on something like this. The other point is that simple doesn't mean bad, and that's a concept that Not in the Woods taught me. And that is because a game is simple, because a game doesn't have mo a lot of mechanics and gorgeous art or 3d modeling it's not it doesn't mean it's bad and that's a concept i had um i had a lot of trouble kind of forgetting about that, that particular concept because at the time when i was younger i was just so focused on which game looks better i mean if a game tells a good story good but which game looks better which game performs better things like that and then i after getting more into indie games when i when i grew older um, it kind of made me realize that that there's there's this particular quality standard established by AAA games, but uh, AA or, or indie games as well can can be quite, if not more beautiful than some of the AAA titles. And be before playing Night in the Woods, I played Firewatch uh, during a summer actually, and it was quite a wonderful time. Um, but at the time I played Firewatch and I thought how beautiful the vegetation was, the characters, the dialogue, the music, and it was top notch. And after that, after after playing Firewatch, after coming from Firewatch and starting Night in the Woods, I have this very weird idea or concept of the game that it wasn't going to be as good as Firewatch because of the art, because of how it looks, because of the animations, because of the limited gameplay, because it's just like a platform game. But Night in the Woods taught me that simple doesn't mean bad because a game is so simple doesn't mean it's a bad game or it's not gonna tell a good story you know see for example how many people like undertale i don't like undertale but a lot of people like undertale and it's a very simple game and it's just mind-blowing don't you think that something so simple can be so profound and so deep this other point I've mentioned before in uh, What Made of Edith Finch and Life is Strange as well, but it's the concept of bringing something new to the table, making it unique. Those three games are very unique experiences and I think they bring something new to the table when it comes to gaming. Uh, there are quite a few other examples, but I'm going to focus on these three and well, it's a point, uh, uh, something, a concept 
that uh, kind of has been mentioned quite a few times in the video, but it's it's making something unique. When I played Night in the Woods as well, it was nothing like nothing I've seen before. It's just to the animals existing in this very well crafted town doing mon mundane things you know and the visions and the, the the secret cult society of possum springs all of that it was just very cool and unique also the 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 um the band sections the music sections of the game were like a weird mix a weird addition as well as the game demon tower all of this in general night in the woods is a very unique game in that uh, that kind of uh thought me that if you're gonna do something well if i want to do something i'm gonna make it at least interesting or at least something new something that i'm not gonna say something that hasn't um been done before you know something 100 new but at least i'm gonna try to do something to make it unique or make it stand out and the last concept which is kind of my favorite is how grounded Night in the Woods is. Uh, for example, May. May uh, is a college dropout, comes back to her parents' house. Uh, she's, she's struggling with money, she's struggling with mental problems. For example, B, uh, she couldn't go to college, but she has to do things she doesn't want to. For example, work on her father's um, store on her, I think it's a hardware store, the old pickaxe, yes, it's a hardware store. And how mundane are all of the characters, for example, Greg and Angus and and May's mom, for example, May's mom was very, very grounded. And all of these characters are very real. It just feels like uh, talking to actual real people. And how grounded Night in the Woods is and, and, and its characters is just something that stays with me. I've had quite a few scripts for games and I'm working on one actually, but if I'm, if I'm gonna work in a game, one of the concepts that I want to apply is real and grounded characters because not a lot of games do this the the ones that do are limited and while others do it in a very extraordinary fashion for example in fantasy or science fiction i want to do it with mundane characters doing mundane things like night in the woods and like life is strange what, what is life is strange one it's just max doing things in her life uh, powers are involved but she's doing things in her life and how relatable can max be how relatable can a uh, few of the characters be and, and for example in Night in the Woods as well and I was, that's something I want to apply to my games in the future I want people to to see my characters or to read my characters to, to play with my characters and think I can relate to this I can relate to that and I, while I know I can't relate to all of the demographic I, I know that a lot, of, a lot of people won't relate to the characters I, I make because I've had different experiences and I'm a different person I want someone to to relate to a character I make. That's just something. This this is just weird fantasy that I have. I want someone to to play my game and think this character is extremely relatable to me, and and to think this was written by by someone else. Who is this person? You know, because that's what I've wondered as well with Life is Strange and Night in the Woods. Like who wrote Night in the Woods? Who wrote this kind of game? Who wrote Max? Who wrote May? Things like that. And I think that's a concept that I want to apply to my games. So to kind of sum everything up, this game is have inspired me for this for different reasons. But the kind of game I want to make, it's a game that has human and relatable characters, not human literally, but human and relatable characters that people can well relate to, people can actually appreciate. And I think I want to game I make a game that has a good soundtrack because I think it's a very crucial piece in a video game. There are, I've played games that have terrible soundtracks, for example, Generation Zero. I'd kind of take you out of the game for a bit. And when I think I'm, because I'm a musician, I think I can make something work. I'm actually working on a particular project that it's, I don't know when it's gonna be released because I have a lot of my plate, but when it's released, I think uh, you kind of, you will see some of the influences that I've mentioned here. And other than the relatable characters and the soundtrack, I want to make like this unique. I'm not saying it's going to be 100% unique or even good, but I want to try to make a cinematic experience, more of like a, an adventure that stays with you. If it stays with you for the day, then good. My, my goal has been achieved. If it stays with you for more than that, then that's just great. But if, I want a game that kind of stays 
with you at least for the day at least it stays in your mind like you think of this game and you're like oh yeah that game you know because of something because of the characters because of the visuals or because of the music and last but not least i think the dialogue is quite important in crafting when it comes to crafting uh relatable characters but i think the dialogue in general i think it's important in games it, it can take you out of the game actually if uh, if a game has terrible dialogue but I think it's very important to make to make good dialogue in a game, and because I I love writing, um, I think I can make I think I can make it work when it comes to a dialogue. Well, I think I can improve. I think I can make it work. So these games have inspired me to work in the video game industry for various reasons that well have been mentioned in the video. And um, if a game inspires you in some way, let me know in the comments. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear what you have to say. If a game inspires you in a way and how that game inspires you maybe to make something because for example people make art based on of a game people make music people make this and that there are very creative and talented people out there and for example these games inspire me to to even work on games how how games inspire you to do this or that you know to create a painting to create a uh something fan fiction even so it, it's very intriguing so well thank you for watching this was quite of a personal video uh, i'm not gonna bother editing the audio i think i want it this way i want it personal and non-scripted so thank you so much for watching um let me know your thoughts in the comments don't worry i'm working on some scripted videos as well like i said the concept of violence in video games and how some games deal with that for example speck of the line or Watch Dogs 2 and hotline miami and don't worry i'm working on that and more things to come Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day or night or morning, depending on where you are. And take care of yourself.